A bottom slab and girder stem pour presented a beehive of activity. It took approximately 600 cubic yards of concrete for a typical three-span hinge-to-hinge section. This was done in less than 10 hours at the rate of over 60 cubic yards per hour. Georgia buggies were used because just the right amount of concrete can be placed in its correct location at the proper time without inefficiently using expensive heavy equipment. Concrete was first placed, spread, and vibrated for the bottom slab. The surface was hand floated to prevent checking and to assure proper thickness and drainage. Other teams followed right behind with a first and then a final lift in the girder stems. Plywood backboards were used to prevent spillage onto the completed fresh slab concrete. The very next day after the pour, forms were stripped, packaged, and removed for rehabilitation and reuse. Stems were blown clean, cells swept out, and the concrete sprayed with a membrane curing compound. It was a fast moving job. While the stripping, cleaning, and curing operations were still underway in the third span, the carpenters set prefabricated supports for the top deck forms in the first span and were well started in the second. Pre-assembled joist units were set close behind. Sheathing for the deck was nailed in. These forms are non-recoverable. On the two contracts, some one and a half million board feet of lumber will be lost forever. The rod busters came in right on the heels of the carpenters. Deck steel was placed, screed supports and screeds installed, and the three-span hinge-to-hinge unit readied for concrete. The cycle repeated itself every third working day. phases of construction are of equal importance, but the success of the job manifests itself to the traveling public in the writing quality of the deck. This operation received our special consideration. The 13,000 square foot, three span, hinge to hinge unit involved a pour of approximately 300 cubic yards. Concrete was placed in five hours. The final finishing hour depended somewhat on the weather. Here again, buggies were used, placing concrete at the rate of 60 cubic yards per hour. A square front was carefully maintained so that no material would become too hard and difficult to work during the finishing operation. The man in the yellow hard hat directed the concrete buggy traffic in order to avoid congestion and achieve an even working front. Electric vibrators were used to consolidate the concrete, especially where bonding to the caps and girder stems was all important. Strike off and tamping was done with roller tamper screed machines. This equipment was the chief factor making it possible to maintain high quality, uniformly finished decks of the large areas involved and do it every third working day. 
there were over one million square feet of deck in the two contracts. Two machines were used in order to finish the full four lane width. Strike off and tamping was kept right up to placing. Concrete was fresh and, fresh and workable. Surpluses and shortages were easily taken care of near the point of placing and vibrating. These machines have a positive action in striking off, thus leaving the surface true to grade. This results in a great saving of labor on subsequent floating operations. The tamping action caused by eccentric mounting of the front roller leaves approximately one quarter inch of rich, full-bodied grout for easy finishing. With strike off and tamping completed with one or two passes of the machines, interior screeds were removed and the surface readied for floating. The first longitudinal float followed as soon as it was practicable. This 16 foot long float was operated by two men from aluminum bridges that rode the exterior screeds and completely spanned the width being finished. In this view, an apparent low spot is being filled and tamped and floated. The first floating operation was complete when it was evident that a true plane had been achieved. The concrete was still fresh and easily worked. Sometime later, when the concrete had begun to take its initial set, a second longitudinal float was applied. This assured the true plane, sealed the surface, and prevented shrinkage cracks. Note the role of full-bodied grout being carried by the float. Passes were continued until it was evident that there were no high or low spots. The final pass usually consisted of a straight swipe across the full width of deck. Float lap marks were removed using a small long handled bull float. The next operation of deck finishing was brooming. This was done transversely firstly from a fifth bridge with a medium stiff fiber broom. The brooming was usually done very soon after the second floating. As soon as the concrete could be walked on without footprints showing, the final finishing touch was applied. The entire surface was gone over with a steel shod float called a bump cutter. This operation was controlled by a bridge department man who checked the entire deck with a straight edge to ensure as perfect a surface as is possible to attain. Let's review the entire finishing operation. Concrete placement in progress. Strike off and tamping close behind. Five working bridges. Two for each float and one for brooming. and the bump cutting operation in progress behind. Immediately following bump cutting, the deck was completely covered with old rugs, an excellent curing medium when kept wet for the required seven days. Beyond this, you can see another three spans just about ready for bottom slab and girder stem concrete. <laughs>